What is going on, everybody? This is Sheets back with another season of Survivor uh, video content. And this year, we are going to really step it up, and we're going to have Michael Jensen, a.k.a. Brave Jayhawk, joining us as much as he can take it and as much as everybody else can take it. And to answer all of you guys in my Discord, yes, we are doing this again this year. And I haven't still haven't determined how much is free and how much people are going to pay for, whatever it is, but we're going to be enjoying it. And kind of the theme is, we, as with everything I do with TrueDFS, I, I want just everybody to learn. I want everybody to learn how to do this for themselves. I want everybody just to get better at it. And yeah, we'll tell us who like some of our favorite picks are and things like that. But it's going to be my goal if at the end of the season, by the time I'm done with this you already know what i'm going to say almost before i say it you know because this is not a diff listen this is not a difficult game to play um once you kind of learn the ins and outs so you know, there's some subtleties but you know there there is really ways to play it poorly so 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 we're going to try to do our best um first of all um before i get into it mike i, mean, I am I don't know about you. I am locked and loaded with a lot of action this year. I mean, I, I, I actually went out, I know you went out a couple of months ago or whatever it was, but I just came back last week from, from Circa. Um, I, I flew out to Vegas and I'm, you know, playing with a partner or whatever we each we put in, I put in a max six entries there. I even actually, do, I actually donated, <laughs> I donated a thousand to the against the spread pool, which is literally me throwing money in the trash can. Okay. <laughs> but I decided I'm going to do it anyway. I got like, like I have like 30 and 20 inches, some other single pick pool. I got 26 entries and some other double pick pool. I got this other pool. I am all kinds of action. So, so I, I am, I am ready to go. Um, and before I, I, I ask you what you've been up to and what you're playing or whatever it is, I just want to just tell everybody again, you know, well, we're going to be kind of focusing this whole season on your traditional kind of single pick pools you know everybody's pool could be different and maybe sometime if we identify a team we'll, we'll say well maybe for double pick pools as we get to there we can talk about that and the other thing i will say is that you know you don't have to bother asking us you know like who you are playing in this neither of us are going to tell you guys who our actual plays and like say circa are or anything like that nobody wants to give away their ev or anything like that but what we're going to do is we're going to Go through plays. We're going to tell you what we think good plays are, what we think shitty plays are. And remember, your pools are always different than ours. Okay. Like we don't know who's taken what in your pool, who's take what you've taken, and anything like that. So it's it's really not worth it for you to like even like post in the in the YouTube channel. Well, who's your favorite play this week? Because I don't know who you picked, you know? And and I also would appreciate if you guys didn't. A couple of guys did last year. It's not the biggest deal, or whatever. But say I picked this, 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 this. Who should I take? You just can't give like individual kind of advice like that. Because again, we don't. First of all, we don't want to be responsible for it. And second of all, um, you don't want to. You know what I mean? Like for all the reasons you might imagine. So first of all, Mike, where are you playing big this year? Are you playing a lot of stuff. You ready to go? I mean, tell me what you've done in preparation so far. Uh so. Like we talked about a few months ago, one of my favorite days of the year is this NFL schedule release day. I get really excited. I, uh, I always put that on the calendar. I'll make my own spreadsheet just looking throughout the season. I'll spend two or three days on it, looking at it from a, a survivor pool perspective, and then I'll put it aside. And I, I put it aside until mid-August, um, and then that's when I revisit it look at the lines. Um, I actually cut back quite a bit this year. I'm doing the Circa as well. I have a partner for that. Yep. Uh, I've worked with uh, my, my partner, Jesse, on Survivor Pools for I think eight years now. We've won, we've won two together, and we're doing that pool as well. It's a 10-entry, it's a, a um, single picks. But if, uh, if, it, if the season ends with more than one, uh, person, you go to the playoffs, there, and there's there's some there's some quirky rules. Okay, uh, the, the rules are once you get to the playoffs, if you did not use that, a, a certain team, you can use them twice in the playoffs. Okay, if you did use them during the regular season, you can use them once. We, we've won that twice, and I'm doing one other pool, 40 entries. Um, it has five double pick weeks, and that's it. I, I cut out a bunch of the other ones just to, to save some time um, with some. 
other things going on, but I'm really excited that for the, I, I picked my three favorite ones and I'm, 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 I put a lot of time in the last few days and I'm, I'm excited, ready to go and looking forward to opening night tomorrow and, night. And the thing about survivor pools again, so the, the friend that I'm partners with, you know, you, you, you'll, you see me like kind of tweet back at him on, 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 on Twitter from time yep. to time, but, but, but he and I, we, we've been, we've been really good friends since all the way since college. We've been like DJing since college, which is a long time ago. And, and Jesse, Jesse and I have as well. Since, yeah. Uh, and, and, and what's cool. I mean, it's, it's really weird. You know, I, I just saw him when we saw, you know, went to, went to, to Circa and I, I literally don't speak to him like, like eight months out of the year. And, and then, and then like, during these next four or five months, like the, my, our texts are just like nonstop, like back and forth, you know, and, and just, just questioning each other's pick and going back and forth. We should do this, 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 this. So for those of you that are playing against it, I will say this, like, like, like Mike and Mike and his partner and me and my partner, people that are good at this, they work really hard, you know, like, like, like anything that that's worth doing is, is, is in my opinion, worth putting a lot of, you know, worth putting a lot of time into it. So this is not just, this is not this is not easy, but it's it's completely worth it. I want to I want to throw something in before we kind of get right into it. I want to add. I want to I want to jump in one one okay. comment about having a partner. Um, I definitely do not recommend doing it. Um, to th those listening, you really have to be on the same line of thought as your partner. If and every once in a while I know what you're saying. and I still okay. so one of us has to budge usually we talk it through and, yeah. and one of us makes more sense the to the other and, and, and they concede but uh, uh Jesse just left an hour ago and we did our our picks for um you know a couple of our our pools for the for this weekend it's fun doing it with someone because you're you're gonna miss yeah. something when you look at it your own but when it comes down to it if you don't line up in terms of your, what your strategic approach, like if you have biases toward picking certain types of games, it, it leads to some issues. But if you're on this, have a similar line of thinking, having a partner is fantastic. No, with ours, with ours, with ours they're it's gonna, cool. They're going to see things you're going to miss. With ours, it's cool because if, if 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 we end up losing a week, he'll just blame me. It's great. It, it works out. It works out. It works out just perfectly. Um. So so uh. So I want to add a couple of things. So first of all, every every time we do this, we're going to start off with the survivor the survivor grid thing up here, and we're going to talk about EV and all this stuff. But I did want to mention that I, I for true DFS people, it took me like years to finally do it, but but I did put up a, a, a customizable EV uh, table um, and for on true DFS. If you ever want to tweak um, uh, ownership percentages, or for that matter. Uh, win percentage. I know like team rankings has its own or whatever it is, but I, I, I went through the code and did one and, and along with my brother-in-law who, who translated this code onto here. Um, it, for, it, it's now customizable for like, so like some pools, like, you know, the ownership's going to be like a little different or, and if you do have an opinion that maybe the uh, team's winning percentage is higher and you feel like imposing your will on, on, on Vegas, you can certainly do it and, and, and play around with it. So that's, that's another thing. So, all right. to, to jump in really quick, yeah. really nice tool to have for late in the season when it's sometimes be very obvious who people are taking. Yeah. And also it's very handy for pools that have different rules, yeah. like the Circa pool. For those that don't know, they, they have a Thanksgiving Day three-game slate and a Christmas four-game slate. That is going to alter uh, pick percentage breakdowns in the weeks prior because yeah. with that extra game being played, people are going to – tend to save certain teams for those slates. So using a calculator like that will be really handy for those types of pools to, to help uh, figure out, determine what your best pick is. So, so this is what we do. So, so, so guys, this is what survivor pool is about. It's, it's about to find good survivor pool plays. You need a combination. You need two things, right? You need immediate EV and low future value. So again, just to review what, what those two things mean are, so immediate EV is a combination of a team's winning chances as determined by Vegas um, as a function of ownership. In other words, if you have two teams that have equal winning chances, you want to take a team that's lower owned to get better leverage over the team that's higher owned. And that kind of uh, that calculation, it becomes what's called immediate EV or someplace just call it EV. And if you go to, you know, the survivor grid, which is free, by the way, um, it, it will actually do this calculation for you and you can list teams by EV. It'll give the win percentages as implied by Vegas and the popularity 
which is you could set your 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 settings to whoever you want. Like this gives the popularity of just office football pool, th those players. This one is just for run your pool, which are their two biggest ones. This is for Yahoo. And this is the average. And my and our thing does the same thing. And so you should always start by, you know, ranking teams by EV. And then the rest, when I talk about future value, I mean, you want to take teams that will, in all likelihood, you're not going to want to use in the future. So <clears throat> you prefer to take teams with lower future value than higher future value. The whole concept, again, of survivor pools is not, you know, to, to necessarily survive week by week, but although it's, it's important, is to come up with a plan to get all the way to the end. And, and, and which means is that, is that you have to plan out not in your head, but like just kind of visually and either using a spreadsheet or using your own like handwritten notes, you know, whatever, you have to come up with these paths for these teams. So, so when you're coming up with, with, with a team's, you know, whether it's a good play or not, you want to say, okay, do I need to use them now? Or am I going to really want to use them in the future? So, so that's what we're looking for is a combination of, of EV and, and, and low future value. Now, before we get into it, I was going to kind of put this on a piece of paper. I was going to throw it up here, like these kind of like rules of whatever, but maybe I'll do it for the next thing. But I think that everybody that does Survivor, I think they have to kind of like sign a contract with themselves. Um, like kind of like rules to follow by. And, and like, and for me, for Survivor Pool, like rule one is to accept that Vegas knows what the implied probability of these teams winning are okay that is the assumption that is very important that i really think you have to make now we can debate this forever okay about about look the reality is is that let's say san francisco is playing chicago and san francisco does have a certain percent chance of beating them. that is in the ether system and actually nobody knows what that is for sure okay that is Oh, really, to, for lack of a better description, that is up to the football gods. You know what I mean? Like, But there is mm -hmm. a 8% chance, whatever it is, that San Francisco beats Chicago. Now, since we don't know what that is, we could guess the way predictive markets and law of large numbers works is that the best, the best indication of what that number is, is the sum of the intelligence of people that are actually putting their money where their mouths is. And, and that is what I mean by Vegas, you know, like, and, and, and when you have a, a incredibly liquid pool, like the NFL and everybody playing it, you know, the theory is, is that the law of large numbers dictates is that all these people are predicting the certain things going to happen. That's the closest thing you're going to come up with, with what reality is. So, so when I say trust Vegas, when, when, when these numbers on the, in the middle here says win percentage, that is where you can start. Okay. And, and now that would be rule one and, and listen, not to be sarcastic, but, for me, rule two is this, is that if you're thinking of, of deviating from Vegas because of something like division rivalries, you don't like teams that are home, you don't like teams that are on the road, you don't like like running quarterbacks, you, you, you think that it's too cold, you think it was ever, if you're thinking of deviating from Vegas for any of those reasons, see rule one, okay? And, and if you could follow like those two rules like that, you're really gonna do, you're gonna do yourself a favor, okay? Um, and and <clears throat> and look, I'm not saying that you can't beat it. That's fine. If you really think you can beat it, just go ahead and 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 bet against the spread. You know what I mean? <laughs> just just go ahead and, and and then go against the money line, whatever it is. And 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 you can do that. And 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 here's one thing that I sometimes always not fight, but when I talk with my 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 partner about this, I would say I I could it's very possible that I will have 70% of a team in survivor pool and think the opposing team is a stone lock against the spread. Right. And, <laughs> and it bothers him. You know what I mean? Like it, it really does. How can you like that? I'm like, but because they're two different puzzles, they are two different, different approaches. Okay. Um, I am just, I, I think that we all have to, and every week we have to almost want to put these like two little commandments up there. One, trust Vegas. Two, if you're thinking of not trusting Vegas, see rule one. OK, and and, Correct. and 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 that's really the bottom line. Now, people have asked me something like, well, what if it's like a stone cold tie? And I'm like, it's never a stone cold tie. OK, for openers. And secondly, if you're between two teams and 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 they're exactly the same EV and they're exactly the same popularity, the exact same future value. And you do have to give your opinion. Fine. All right. You, you'll, you That'll make you shut up. 
fine, go go for it. But it's very rare that it really comes down to that. So so I think that it's listen, it's hard enough given these percentages to play this well, you know, to to try to try to mess with it, I think is is just kind of asking for. I presume you're with me on this, but 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 do you have any any other thoughts on that or or yeah, we we, we spoke about this a few months ago. There's no reason to add any extra variables that makes your decision making process more difficult and more lengthy. Okay, so so this is what we do every week. So so we, we pull up the board, and I guess we'll start by just using the average uh, popularity. And I'm I'm listing these guys by by EV, and we should just talk about some of these top plays. And the first thing I'll notice is that first of all, from an EV perspective. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty close. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you'll, you'll have like one team kind of really stand out, but it does some seem to be somewhat close. So what I'd like to do is first of all, to set some kind of, um, I don't know, like some kind of like, like line of demarcation of where the first like real, real jump is. So let, I think I'm going to start yeah. with this, with this new Orleans to Tennessee. I think that, that, that new Orleans and I think Tennessee and below, I'm probably going to discount um, just because you have a point for, discrepancy between new orleans and tennessee um so so that's kind of what what i what i would do and and, and then what i would do i just go through each of these teams and say okay which of these teams just kind of fits my pattern a little bit better and wh where the ties are breaking so i mean let's just start with san francisco what what do you, you, you i mean I, I they look like a strong play right uh you know strong ev and then i look over the right they do have a bunch of future value but i don't know like what, what do you think of san francisco so I have I have eight possible picks that most people would choose between um, not, you know, taking into account the people that are going to miss pick or they're going to pick the biggest underdog for whatever reason it is. And I ranked them one through eight. I have San Francisco as my second biggest pick, second, second best pick this week um, with a pretty big drop off from number one. And we'll get to that later. Okay. Um, I like San Francisco a lot. I, I, I never look at this from a uh, personnel standpoint or you know odds of win the division or who the quarterback is n none none of those things matter to me at all and, and, and that's just going a little bit beyond what you were just talking about which are two very important roles and if you break rule one rule two see rule one really important for people to recognize that looking at it from the strategy that my partner and I like to do, we like San Francisco a lot because when you look at the weeks in play, there's only so many uh, we, uh, weeks you can take San Francisco, especially if you eliminate some of the latter weeks of the season because you can't, you know, week 18, week 17, looking that far out, so many things can happen. But looking out for the first half of the season, they have a few really good plays, but they are far less picked uh, than Indianapolis, Baltimore, and Tennessee. So right there, you're, you're, I mean, you're going to gain an immediate advantage. Um, and they have a very similar win percentage to all those teams as well. Well, the other, one of the things that Michael is, is, is kind of talking about is this. So, so one of the things that you could visualize from Survivor Grid is is what these teams projected lines are going to be in the future. Now, if you want to get even more technical, I don't know if they drag it from the DraftKings Sportsbook, but if you guys know this, didn't know this about DraftKings Sportsbook, they have lines for every game, like the whole season. So I don't know if they're actually using the DraftKings API call to come up with this, but but nonetheless, I mean, this is a good way to start. So you just like eyeball San Francisco here, and you'll see that that you know, listen that they're there, and what what you do to f figure out future value? Yeah, you can look at these stars. That's a decent estimation, but you can get a little more into it. Like you look at San Francisco. Okay. So they're only minus seven this week. And you think, okay, so maybe minus eight and a half next week, maybe you want to save them for them, but let's take a look at what the, what the status of that week looks like. So they're, for example, they're only the fourth best option, like in week number two. Right. So, 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 you know, maybe that's, that's worth doing, or maybe it isn't, but that's the way you kind of analyze it. And then you look in, in the future here. I mean, you see Washington 16 and what and what what Mike is saying is, is that, it, yes, it's important to consider the future, but the further out the future is, the more variance is associated with it. So so like right now, I mean, if you could presume that San Francisco would be eight and a half over Seattle, that's got a better chance of being accurate than the San Francisco 
actually being exactly minus seven over Washington in 16. OK, just because right. just a lot of stuff can happen there. So when you're planning for future value, you know, remember, the further the future is is out, the more variance associated with that. So so so, yeah, I mean, it looks like San Francisco is, is pretty strong. And like you said, not that many spots to take them. Um, so I, I guess we'll, we'll just continue down. So so cincinnati by the way is a good example of, of of a team that has kind of like artificially uh like different percentages for certain pools because like he was mentioning the circuit pool one of the rules in the circuit pool is that if you take cincinnati you can't if you avoid cincinnati and the rams the whole season there's like a there's a bonus in it for you and people could argue whether that's worth hunting or not but the fact is is that it's going to be it's going to deflate their ownership relative to the rest of the of, of, of the pools. Right. So, so you probably, if you're playing that pool, you probably want to reduce the popularity estimates for Cincinnati. Um, but, but, it, but in any case, uh, there could be a reason for that. Maybe you want to hunt value. So you have to make a, a further EV calculation of what that, what that share of the bonus is worth. So Cincinnati, um, uh, they are pretty close to some of these others, as far as EV goes, and you look at future value. I'm I'm looking at se- at week seven. They're looking to be ten and a half. They're at home in week nine. They're maybe seven and a half. But I just want again. I just want to rank these by column here. The other thing about Cincinnati in week seven is they are the number. They'll probably be the the top option, which 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 means something. So yes, I I think that they can be played uh, in the future. But I definitely think that they're certainly an option this week. What do you think of Cincinnati? Uh, Cincinnati is my third favorite play, and yeah. with a pretty reasonable drop off to four, five, and six. Um, you know, very similar reasons. Um, you know, three uh, medium term plays uh, between one, seven, and nine. Um, seven and nine are better. Um, and when he's referring to seven and nine, that means that 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 that's the week that that, that he's considering mm-hmm. using them in the future. If I was only doing one entry, I would not take Cincinnati. But when you're doing more than one pool or multiple entries in one pool, you need to create a profile of picks. Um, you know, just so di- di- uh, diversify oh, yeah, your risk, portfolio. portfolio. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes I go all in, probably more than most do. I'll, I'll go all in with my entire portfolio. But, um, you know, Cincinnati is a, is a good team to really mix between three different weeks. And if I'm not going to go all in with them, again, when I say this, I'm, a, I'm speaking as the spreads are right now. I'm aware that. <laughs> They can and likely will change, but all I can go with is where it currently stands and I'll adjust each week. But as it is right now, if I was forced to make my picks for every week going forward for the entire season, I would I would need Cincinnati for week seven and nine for some of my entries, but I would not want to use them for all of them in one of those weeks. So I'm more or less forced not, I mean, not not by pressure because I think it's a great pick, but the the the, the third best week to p- take them for me is week one, okay. um, and that, that they they're because of that they're my third favorite pick of the week. So you have Kansas City, who is going to be plus, you know, it's going to probably be an EV of more than one, literally every every uh, every week of the season, and and because they're going to be probably a decent favorite a decent amount of the time. And which means is that there's just there's to me, there's just going to be other times to play. them. I'm just even staring. I'm just eyeballing. I see a 10 point. Well, actually, we got to do some to Indiana. Uh, we'll do Kansas City first. We'll go back to Indianapolis. Um, and I see Kansas City is a 10 here and a 10 here and an 11 here and, and God knows what else. So um, I, I, I don't I don't know how interested in them I am this week. Yeah, Kansas City is an um, impossible pick to make. I, I mean. I'm sure someone can come up with some reason to take them, but I I, I would personally be taking Carolina um, or, I mean, I I would take an underdog before I take Kansas city. I I don't care what the EV is um, because by using Kansas city, you're giving up 
EV that you would realize later if you had Kansas City available in some of these other weeks, uh, 10, 15, and 16. Um, so the EV on Survivor Grid shows 1.04. I mean, that, that could be 1.3. I'm still not taking them. I, I, I just don't care. That, that number couldn't – That. Listen, that, listen, listen, listen. Here's, here's not the thing. There's a constant battle in Survivor in our in in our brains between balancing EV immediate EV and, and and saving for future value. And the cool thing about this game is that there is no mathematical answer, you know. And, and that's what makes it fun. If there was one algorithm that could calculate actually how much future value you can give up for in the name of, of, of good EV, then there, the game would be solved. So, but, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play it because there'd be people that would play it better than me. Right. And it, but, would, but, it just wouldn't but, be but, fun. Cause there wouldn't, there, the guesswork is what makes it fun. Right. Uh, but there, quite, there but quite, but quite, honest, but quite honestly, I mean, you and I have been around the block long enough to know that Kansas city is just a bad, they're just a bad play. I mean, not that they're going to yeah. lose. Right. And I think everybody understands what, what, what that means. Right. If Kansas city comes out and wins 37 to nothing, that doesn't mean that they were a good play. It just doesn't work that way. You know? Um, right. Okay, so let's go back to Indianapolis. So Indianapolis is, you know, kind of tied with these other this glut of 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 you know good EV. Now again, this is Indianapolis has some weird circus stuff, so so it, it's going to be a little bit lower owned in, in in circa because you get one of those weeks where you're forced to play one of four teams and they're one of the mm -hmm. choices. But aside from that, um, I mean they're fine. Uh, you know, again, decent EV. Now, again, keep in mind that even though they're quote unquote popular, that that is that has been already factored into this number. You know what I mean? They're, the, they're, they're popular, but they're also the most likely winner. So that's why the EV comes up like this. So so I think that Indianapolis is a team that I would I would be OK with for the for smaller pools. Um, but maybe for bigger pools, it wouldn't be the best. But let's just take a look and see what they're looking like. So. They have uh they have a, a home game against Jacksonville here with their decent uh Washington decent Pitt decent their only like kind of half lock type game is is again all the way in week eighteen and who knows you know who yeah who knows and and we'll talk about this later in the season but it's also possible that that they're they're too good of a play in that week meaning that who knows you know and this this happens you know you get a team that they saved for week eighteen. And it ends up they're fifteen and one playing a team that's six and ten, and 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 the next thing you know, you know what? You're resting all your players. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> so 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 that that's something we can talk about some other time. But um, uh, that's that's the way I kind of think of Indianapolis is that they're they're probably good for they're 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 good to have in a portfolio. Um, they're a conservative type play. They're they're good to have in a smaller pool. I think they're a little less uh, aggressive uh, in big pools. And that's kind of where I'm at with Indianapolis. Yeah, the 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 fishiest thing I'll ever say on this podcast is this: um, if ever there was a week where the bookmakers will be wrong, it's going to be week one. Um, the best example is in 1999. Uh, I think it was what Bulger went down. Kurt Warner came up. I think there are 400 to 100 dogs when the Super Bowl and they were like the best team of all time. Right. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of variance in football. Things turn over one week. You know, things turn over very quickly. Um, even even with the same players, it can, the Chiefs were not a good team with uh, Romeo Cornell. And Andy Reid comes in with pretty much the same team except for Alex Smith instead of Matt Castle. And they went and, and they've, you know, they won multiple they, – they they've they been in the playoffs every every year since except for one year. Um, and then we got Mahomes. But I I like to avoid the highest pick teams in week one in hopes that the spreads are wrong. Because if ever there's a week they're going to be wrong, it, it is week one. That's pretty, that's um, pretty, that's pretty sharp. That is, that is actually a very interesting way of looking at it. So my, uh, my, my rule of thumb for week one is – I need to come up with a very good reason why I would want to take the highest pick team in week one. And the, the, the biggest exception is going to be like if the dolphins were playing Houston and it was their best game all year. Right. And right. Uh, you know, but I, I don't like taking good teams on week one that, that are the highest pick, but I will concede that 
I don't hate taking the Colts. I, I, I have them ranked very low. I will, I'll, I'll be taking zero of them, but I had, I had to really look for a reason why not to take them. And usually it doesn't take that long. Um, I'm not going to go into the reasons why, but the Colts are going to be a very valuable team in week six and eight in standard pools. And if you don't have the Colts, you and you make some mistakes in some of the, the the weeks leading up to six and eight, and that's again with the current spreads as they are. I, you're going to need the Colts there, um, unless you take an alternate path that you don't box yourself into it, one of the smaller favorites. Um, so I don't like the Colts, but it, it's not. Uh, yeah, in previous years, I, I would I would hate taking the highest pick team, but I don't think it's that bad this year. Well, so I, I, I presume we're going to be on the same page this next game. I, I personally am going to be probably buying a Joe Flacco jersey and, 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 and putting it on and, 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 and uh, getting my uh, Michael Carter jersey and, and, and maybe a Mark Gastineau jersey and putting on my Jets gear and rooting against Baltimore because I'm not doing any of that. Um, so Baltimore is, is – I mean, listen, to me, it's just a lemon. You know, it, it, it's it's not the highest EV play for openers. And like you're saying, you know, if you want to err on the side of not taking the most popular team, they're certainly one of the most popular teams, if not the most popular team. I mean, not to mention, I mean, you can play them in, in the future also. So um, I, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to be doing this. I'm going to I'm going to be probably taking the. Uh, well, rooting for Flacco, being disappointed, but that's uh, that's just the way it's going to have to be for me. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on the same side there too. I, I I actually had Baltimore fourth of my fourth best pick. I, I'll be taking zero of them. I'm only taking three teams in week one this year across all my pools. Um, they have some nice flex options for the end of the season, and the same thing. You know, they're the highest pick team. We know exactly who Joe Flacco is. You know, there's not any, you know, it's not like a rookie coming in and, you know, maybe he's going to perform great. We know Flacco's not, um, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to hope that, you know, he performs well enough and, uh, you know, maybe Lamar Jackson gets knocked out of the game or something. In the end, it's, it's the NFL. It's a seven point spread. The ball can bounce the other way and it, and it, it turns a nice result, but um I, I'm 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 holding out for the upside for the back half of the season with Baltimore. If uh, Baltimore was projected at ten percent, I would have picked them for sure. But eight eighteen is just I I I just don't care what the EV is. I I'm, I like to think best case scenario. That's just that's just too big of a of, of a hold. Eighteen percent for me. So when when. Uh... I do this, something similar when I do my, my podcast with Bobby in, in, with respect to this. So Michael reached out to me a couple, like a week or so ago. So, Hey, just to prepare for the podcast, who are you thinking in, in week one? I'm like, listen, I don't even want to get into that. It's much more, much more pure. If we go in and we, we don't talk about it beforehand. And we literally haven't talked about this first week, literally at all. Um, I, I'm just, I'm just presuming that new Orleans is, is, is the play here. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Um, where 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 are you? Where are you with with respect to New Orleans? Uh, they're my my slam dunk number one. Huge drop off to San Francisco, Cincinnati. I was back and forth between those two. Um, New Orleans is the best pick. I I, I don't even think it's close. Um, very low pick percentage. Um, they are on the road, which I love. They are on um, playing a division rival, which I love. Well, what um, well, yeah. what what you're saying? Okay, so I don't want to d- double count this, right? So, so what he's getting at is that people are afraid to bet teams on the road. People are afraid to bet division rivals, and as a result, they're going to have a low pick percentage. So you are saying the same thing three times, right? Yeah. Um, they, Correct. They, they do have but a they, longer pick percentage, yeah. and the reason why is for all those reasons that you're mentioning. Correct. And and when you and when you're when you're playing these survivor pools. Assume we're, we're, we're in a discussion here for a single pick league. I, I play in pools that I assume are going the distance. I, I don't play in a pool with 100 people. Um, mine are going to be 15,000 for my double picks one. Uh, Circa is going to be, what, 4,000-ish. And my other one's around 1,000. 
I play all those pools for the distance. I assume I got to pick 18 winners in a standard pool. And then if there's extra weeks than that, I, I vi you visually look at who the top 18 teams are. That doesn't mean you're not going to pick the top 18 teams. You might pick the 26 best team depending on their matchup, but you have to pick a lot of teams that instinctively don't feel like that should be a team that you have to take. New Orleans does not have a lot of spots. It, it, only accounting for the first half of the season, they only have two plays, uh, one and five. Their next play is in 15. Um, if everything holds, it won't. But if it does, I'm not going to want to take the Saints in 15 anyway. I'm just going to hope that Atlanta knocks them off. Um, so if I'm not going to take them in their absolute best game of the season, I need to find a place to take them because they are easily a top 18 team. And you have to, you're going to have to pick someone. Why not do it with a team that's very low picked um, and very, re, you know, very closely favorited compared to these other teams. Um, we're, we're talking 67% versus 74% at the high end um, with a much smaller pick percentage. Win, win, win. So I will I will uh, I will throw this out there. So this is a um, this is a quiz for everybody. Um, the, ch the chess podcast do this. What they'll do is they'll they'll go through the game and then they'll say, okay, so here's a spot. Um, why don't you pause the video and, and and see if you can come up with it. And then if you then 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 unpause the video and I'll give you the answer. So I wanted to ask theoret rhetorically for everybody that's out there. Um, uh, and, and you sort of gave it away, but not exactly. So that's, this is good. So when you're analyzing the New Orleans pick, right, uh, a person would look out into the future and they'd say, wow, why do I want to play them now? When, I mean, look at week 15. Week 15, you have New Orleans as, as the second biggest favorite on the card, you know, and, and I probably will have used, you know, a KC or Buffalo. So, why don't I save New Orleans for when I'm really going to need them out over there? So my question is rhetorical for now, but I will ask this and then everybody can pause for a second is why would you, why would you not want to play New Orleans in week 15? Okay. So pause. All right. Then you're back. The reason why as, as, as he, as Michael was alluding to is this. So nobody is picking New Orleans this week. Right. So, which means this, let's go to week five, like week five, I guess it's possible that some people play New Orleans, but you have Tampa and Buffalo as like an enormous favorite there. Okay. So if you presume that very few people play New Orleans here and very few people have played them in week one, what that means is that 90% of the pool will have them available to them in week 15. So if you have 90% of the pool available to them in week 15, after all the other carnage, you know, has happened and, and you get New Orleans at a seven point favorite in this spot, New Orleans is going to be about 70% owned in that spot for no other reason than the pure attrition. You know, they're, they're going to have that much available because no one's going to use them elsewhere and all the other good teams are going to be taken. So when you, when you fast forward it in your mind, like what this EV chart could look like in week 15, you're going to end up with a team, New Orleans in week 15, that's probably a two to one favorite maybe that's going to be 70% owned and their EV is going to be like 0.6. OK, so it's as, as Mike was saying, he's not going to want to play them in 15 anyway. So why not just play them now? I, I presume that that's what you're kind of, kind of getting. At. And that that's and that that is actually pretty, pretty sharp, advanced stuff. You know what I mean? And, but but it's really important that when you analyze your, your mapping out in the future, it's not so easy to say, boy, they look like a good play in 15, because if they look like a good play in 15, then everybody's going to see they look like a good play in 15. And if no one has used them until then, there's just so much liquidity out there for that team that that they're just going to get pounded. And you're going to be sitting there and you will have held them all this season for that great spot. And then you'll get there and you're going to say, crap, I don't even want to play them anymore. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. so, so, so to, to, to figure that out in advance is really, really important. Um, so and I'm for not, those that are doing pools with multiple picks, in the single pick pools, you'll be fine. You can just audible off to someone else. But in the pool that I'm doing with five mandatory double pick weeks, you put yourself in a bad spot. If you end up getting there and not using them anyway, 
that you you create a really bad situation for yourself because you have a lot less teams that you're even allowed to pick from at that point. You almost have to pick you don't, you'd almost have to pick them anyway. Otherwise, you might be on a seven point underdog. I mean, I mean, really, I was in a pool a couple of years ago where it was double picks and there are multiple people that were on on plus six teams. Um, you know, just because we had so many double pick weeks. It does I wanna, happen. I want to I ask your opinion on on something. So there's and mm-hmm. I, I fought with my partner over this earlier today. So there are some pools out there that, for whatever reason, identify peak week five as a, as a double pick week. And there are several pools that have opted to do this. I don't know why pick five, week five is, is, seems to be the one. But week five, you have New Orleans. And that's the one we talked about, right? That, that, that they're available yeah. there. And in a double pick week, you know, it, you have Tampa and Buffalo and Green Bay up here. I mean, in, I, I one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I don't want to struggle, but I think about New Orleans and, and – I'm of the belief that New Orleans could end up being enormous chalk in week five in, in, in the double pick week. Um, but then on the other hand, I'm like, if I'm wrong about that, I kind of want them in this spot because like I said, we don't want them in, we don't want them in 15, certainly in double picks in 15. You know what I mean? Um, so, so yeah, the, the, the rules are very important. Uh, yeah. I, I see exactly what you're asking. Some of the pools I, I'm not, I've never been in one of these, but okay. Uh, there's plenty of pools out there that are 5, 10, 15 right. for double picks. And right, now right. in that exact structure, yeah, um, I would 100% use New Orleans in five. You, would, you wouldn't use them now? Them, you wouldn't use them fade now? Them and fade them in 15. Okay, okay. Because I wouldn't take I wouldn't take Tampa Bay or Buffalo either. Right. I mean, okay. I, I I wouldn't take either of those. Right. Um, right. it, it, you know, so that, that's why I would take New Orleans theirs because I wouldn't take Tampa Bay or Buffalo. So I'm now interested. So because you said there were like eight teams you were listening, so I wouldn't play any of this other stuff. So what? 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 what give me a. I actually do have one kind of like super aggro hoodoo player or whatever. But what? What else you got for me besides under, under the 1.01 here? Um. Well, I, I just looked at the highest favorites. Um. Because that's what most. Okay. I mean, most people tend to look at. Um, so the ones that we didn't discuss yet are Tennessee. Well, I, mean, I consider all these are just total colossal fade. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't play. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't play a cent of Tennessee. Uh, I, I mean, literally not. A cent. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm not taking Tennessee, but I, I would have taken Tennessee before Indianapolis. That's um, interesting. Okay. Um, we, we could talk about that that later. It's, it's, it's pretty complex, but with, with – oh, we did – my partner and I went over a f- five-week map, mapping five specific weeks. Okay. And Indianapolis is just uh, more important than Tennessee. Um, and then uh, De- Denver, yeah, De- Denver is. You know, I, I have Denver. You know, not. I mean, I'm not taking them, but I, I still prefer them over Indianapolis as well. Okay. Um, but uh, I, th- I bet I think your wacky pick. I- I'm not taking any Denver. I'm not taking any Tennessee. I'm taking New Orleans, San Francisco, Cincinnati, waiting it in that order. I think your wacky pick is uh, Washington. Okay. Um, I really liked Washington originally for even some standard pools, and then I, I got off of that because it's it, it's just way too crazy. But I like Washington a lot. I also uh, for for double pick pools, I love Washington and I love uh, Carolina. Um, it's Washington's like, I don't know, second best game all year. Um, you got to pick, you know, in the one I'm in 23 winners. I mean, you got you to pick some bad teams at some point. Why not? The idea, guys, is that, is that, you know, even just to visualize this, like in these double pick pools and these pools with a zillion people, low future value just means so much that, that, that these – these are the types of stabs you can take, you know, with even teams that are not like the biggest favorites in the world, because you just pick up so much. If you get away with it, um, you just, you just open up just other possibilities that you wouldn't have otherwise. And, and like you were saying, I mean, you got to go through, it's not, it's not, it's not getting through 18 weeks, right? But like double picks, it's like 20, you got to pick double picks, it's like 23 teams, you know? Yeah. So it's not so easy to, 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 to get through. So I'm, I'm kind of, I, I don't. I don't mind the uh, the Washington as, as a dart. I don't mind Carolina as a dart. Um, oh, it's gotta be my. It has to be Miami then. No, 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 no. I'm. I'm. I don't. I don't. 
yeah, that's that's where I am. I, yeah, Miami, Miami's okay too, you know. But I, I don't think that I'm getting down to any of that. Um, oh, okay. I, I thought you were saying you had one that. You no, I didn't. Mention. I didn't. Okay, I, I wasn't was, going was anywhere. Yes, okay. I mean, yeah, I'm not doing it. anything crazy either. Yeah, I wasn't going anywhere below. I probably wasn't going anywhere under New Orleans. I wasn't playing Tennessee. I wasn't playing Miami. I mean, Philly Chargers. Anyway, I wasn't doing any of this stuff. Um, uh, but uh. But we are both kind of on the same page with respect to the effectiveness of a new of a, of a New Orleans pick. And again, like when, when you guys, you know, hopefully you guys learn during the course of the season, you know, how to analyze this. And this is listen, this is this was not particularly, you know, earth shattering. You know, you, you rank them by EV, then you eyeball the season, you know, and 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 you and you figure out, you know, which teams you're going to want to use in the future and, and hold them back. And uh, and there you go. Um, all right. So I guess we'll, we'll kind of call this, I'm going to post this up on the, up on the site within the next, uh, I guess, couple of hours and, um, and we'll tweet it out and listen, if you have any, any questions or comments posted in the, in the, in the comments, I guess, the YouTube channel and uh, listen, I can't promise we'll, we'll, you know, I'll be able to check back to answer questions really, but, but I'll do, I'll do my best. And, uh, that's it. Any, any, any other great words of wisdom for week one, uh, Mike? No, I I mean, what's probably going to end up happening is like last year I got wiped out in the first week. I really <laughs> went for it. The the hardest part for me will be if I if I get wiped out in the first couple of weeks and then finding a good way to keep the discussion going with you, be, being that I had teams that yeah lost, but most people well, say, still have because they didn't use them. Well, for um, me it was for me for me for me it was it was good because I actually won one of them, so I got to go all the way to yeah. the end and everybody's whatever. Uh, yeah, and that and makes then, it that makes it a lot easier. Yeah, um, but 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 you know the thing is also is that you'll find everybody that when you get near the end, the the analysis becomes a little bit more 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 stupid because everybody's pool you're at a different freaking spot. I always like say. Okay, all these views are good, good EV, but you you probably don't have any of them available. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it, it, it's 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 the first 10, 10, 11 weeks is really where 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 the action is, and then it becomes more of a sweatshop. But um, uh, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody. Thanks for for go, for coming on, Mike, and we'll uh let let's get after it. See you all next right. week. All right. Thanks, man. Let's see.